Hi, it's your pal Steamed Hams. Join me every week on the Unforgettable Luncheon as we discuss topics in the nerd world like gaming, comics, cartoons, and whatever else may cross my mind. You can find me on the socials as SteamedHams81 on Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram, and YouTube. You can also find me as the Unforgettable Luncheon on Facebook. And check out Steamed Hams Merchatorium, the link to which will be in the description of this podcast. The Unforgettable Luncheon, nerd comedy at its okayest. The Rocky Horror Picture Show, a story about a couple who stumble upon a castle filled with weirdos, a mad scientist, and some of the best music in film history. Once a critical and financial flop, it became a hit and cult classic in midnight showings, becoming the longest running release in cinema history. Let's do the time warp again as we talk about the Rocky Horror Picture Show today on the Unforgettable Luncheon. Hi, it's your pal Steamed Hams. I hope you're ready for an unforgettable luncheon. The Rocky Horror Picture Show is a 1975 musical comedy starring Tim Curry, Barry Bostwick, and Susan Sarandon. It centers on the goings-on at a castle that houses a transvestite mad scientist and his group of oddballs after being joined by a couple who were stranded in the rain. Originally starting as the 1973 stage play The Rocky Horror Show was written by Richard O'Brien it evolved into the film that is a staple across midnight showings all over the world. Inspired by O'Brien's love of science fiction and B-movies, it hits all the marks you want in a musical comedy film. It stars Tim Curry as Dr. Frank N. Furter, a transvestite mad scientist who is obsessed with building the perfect man. This film was Tim Curry's first big film and his big break. So, we should thank this movie for bringing us the magic that is Tim Curry. Barry Bostwick and Susan Sarandon star as Brad and Janet, a young, recently engaged couple who come upon Frank's castle after a flat tire in a storm. Richard O'Brien, the man who wrote this wonderful play that became a movie, uh, stars as Riff Raff, the hunchbacked live-in butler. Patricia Quinn stars as Magenta, Riff Raff's sister, and maid in the house, Little Nell as Columbia, a groupie, and others that we will get to in a bit. The film opens with a pair of disembodied lips, voiced by a male, but female lips, welcoming the audience to a science fiction double feature, followed by an unnamed criminologist who, throughout the film, narrates and comments on the events in the film, including teaching the audience how to do the time warp. If you don't know the time warp, what is wrong with you? Brad Majors and Janet Weiss are attending the wedding of a mutual friend. They profess their love for each other and get engaged. Boy, that's quick. And also, why would you get engaged at somebody else's wedding? That's kind of tacky, dude. They decide to celebrate with their old science teacher, Dr. Scott, in whose class they first met. Okay, that's a weird thing. It's like, we just got engaged. Let's find our old science teacher and celebrate. I got engaged, I'd be done. Wait, I was engaged because I'm married. So, ha! On the road in a rainstorm, the car gets a flat, and the couple seeks help in an old castle up the road. They're greeted by Riff Raff, hunchback butler, and his sister Magenta, the maid. They're joined by Columbia, a groupie, and a group of oddballs as they sing The Time Warp. Now, there are various songs throughout this film. It is a musical. Uh, some of my favorites being Sweet Transvestite, Time Warp, uh, Damn It Janet, and of course Science Fiction Double Feature is always awesome. But I digress. Enter Dr. Franken Furter, a mad scientist and transvestite. After the musical number Sweet Transvestite, great song, I ain't gonna lie, Frank invites Brad and Janet to stay for the night. Frank brings to life a tall, muscular, blonde man named Rocky uh, that he built himself. After vowing to make Rocky the ideal man, a bandaged motorcyclist named Eddie, played by Meatloaf, breaks free of a deep freeze, hops on his motorcycle, and causes havoc. Frank kills him with an ice axe, 
you know, calling it a mercy killing because, well, Eddie was missing something because he had the bandages on his head. So Frank and Rocky then retired to the bridal suite because, you know, Frank wants some of that Rocky loving, you know. And Brad and Janet are given separate rooms, and each are visited and seduced separately by Frank. Meanwhile, in another part of the castle, Magenta and Riff Raff torture Rocky because that's how they get their kicks, I guess. Janet learns of Brad's little fl fling with Frank, and of course, runs off, decides to seduce Rocky after finding him and tending to his wounds uh, from the torture. This is all watched in secret by Magenta and Columbia on a monitor. Perverts. Dr. Scott just happens to show up, being now a UFO scientist for the government, because why not? This is already a weird movie. He's looking for his nephew, Eddie, knowing that Frank stole part of Eddie's brain for Rocky. Everyone, of course, discovers Janet and Rocky together, and, well, as you can imagine, Frank gets pissed. Magenta invites everyone to a very awkward dinner, where they soon find out the dinner is made from Eddie. So what you're saying is they're eating meatloaf for dinner? <laughs> Columbia runs off. Janet runs screaming into Rocky's arms. And Frank chases Janet through the halls to his lab. Because, well, he's pissed. Why wouldn't he be? You're trying to steal his man. You know, Frank uses a device called the Medusa Transducer to turn Brad, Janet, Rocky, Columbia, and Dr. Scott into nude statues. So if it, if it takes away their clothes, makes them nude statues, would that make it a naked ray gun? Ha ha! Music reference! And also, why does, why does the ray gun have to make them naked? I mean, it could just, you know, turn them into stone, but it has to remove their clothes? What happens to their clothes when they get changed back? Are their clothes gone? Are their clothes disintegrate? What? Oh no, I'm getting too much into the science of the stuff. Well, we're moving on. After dressing them in cabaret costumes, he unfreezes the group and leads them in a cabaret floor show by a pool. Magenta and Riff Raff reveal themselves to be aliens, declare a mutiny, and just basically cancel the mission due to Frank's extravagance, and prepare to return home. You know, I'm not going to take this, I'm going home. Riff Raff kills Frank in Columbia. Rocky plunges into the pool with Frank's body to drown himself in grief. The castle lifts off as it was their ship the whole time, leaving Brad, Janet, and Dr. Scott crawling in the dirt and fog. The criminologist concludes that humans are just like insects crawling on the Earth's surface. The end. Now, there was a 1981 sort of sequel called Shock Treatment. The only actors to appear from Rocky Horror Picture Show uh, were Richard O'Brien and Patricia Quinn, this time playing sibling character actors who were Cuckoo and Lil Nell as a nurse in a town that's actually a TV studio run by the diabolical Farley Flavors. Brad and Janet return but are played by new actors. And, of course, Tim Curry did not want to retread the same material, so he declined to return as Dr. Frankenfurter, hence why you don't see Frank anyways, but then again, he was killed at the end of Rocky Horror, but then again, the way these movies run, wouldn't be surprised if he br they brought him back. So Brad and Janet are trapped in this TV studio town and must find a way to escape. Now, this film was a critical and commercial failure. It is almost impossible to find on home media. Um, good luck finding it streaming. But I believe if I do a quick search, it'll probably end up on YouTube because, well, where else do people pirate movies to that you can get to it and YouTube doesn't take them down? YouTube. So, I think I found it earlier, but I wasn't sure if it was the full movie or clips or something. I'll have to look it up, and I will report back. Now, Rocky Horror Picture Show, while at first a failure, um, getting savaged by a lot of critics because, well, with its themes of, you know, sexual liberation, androgyny, and whatnot, a lot of more conservative critics tore it apart. But... It ended up finding its main its home as a mainstay of midnight showings across the U.S. and U.K. You know, because you could go there, you could dress up. People started interacting with the movie. You know, things like, I remember doing this, uh, I dated a girl who knew everything that went on because she'd been to a midnight show. I've not been to one. I'd love to go to one. Trick is finding someone to go with me. 
Um, you know, you yell things back at the, the screen. They have shadow casts that in full costume that perform along with the movie. You know, one of my favorites was, uh, you know, you see, you see Janet running with a newspaper in the rain, you know, hold, hold it overhead and, and you're supposed to yell, buy an umbrella, you cheap bitch. Things like that. You know, I'd love to go to one of those, but again, trying to find someone to go with me because I don't go to movies by myself. That's just weird. Now, the culture of audience participation in cosplay has inspired similar events at other films. Kind of like The Room, you know? And if you don't know The Room, then you are tearing me apart, Lisa! And, you know, Rocky Horror Picture Show is actually the longest continuous release of a film in the world with its regular midnight showings. It is still being shown in theaters regularly since its since its release and it's about what 40 oh 48 years now if it's 2023 yeah 48 years so yeah i'd like to see it on the big screen i've only seen it on the small screen it'd be fun it'd really be fun to do that actually now of course we can't have an episode of this podcast without mentioning that the rocky horror picture show or the rocky horror show uh as it was released in uh, has a PC game. Uh, and yes, this was actually turned into a game. I remember seeing it in a magazine. I believe it was Electronics Gaming Monthly when it actually got released in the U.S. Um, and I didn't know what Rocky Horror Picture Show was. I was only like eight or nine. So, you know, I'm like, what's this? And then later on, of course, I find out it's a movie. And that's not an actual like full-on horror scary movie. It's just a musical comedy horror you know, so you played as either Brad or Janet trying to locate the four parts of the Medusa transducer to save your partner, whoever is the one you're not playing, and escape from Frank's castle. Now, you have to contend with the other characters who will try to stop you, such as Frank, Magenta, and Columbia trying to steal your clothes because they're perverts, and Riff Raff and Eddie will actively try to kill you. And this game is available on Internet Archive, so go check it out. There's a lot of cool games and stuff on there, stuff I grew up with that, like, obviously I can't get my hands on anymore. I can at least play the demos or even the full games, which is a lot of fun. You know, Rocky, of course, he's harmless. He's a harmless little boy. Yeah. Now, the Rocky Horror Picture Show has an amazing cultural impact. Everybody can enjoy this film no matter what corner of life and society you come from. It has helped a lot of people unleash their, not only unleash their weird, but at the risk of alienating some of my audience, it has helped people truly find like their sexual identity, which I think is great because you can't live your life hiding. You can't. And I think it's pretty cool that a movie like this actually did this. You know, and what other what other movie can you really say has done this? And then people are going to get in the comments like, well, this movie and this movie. Well, maybe I forgot some. Excuse me. But this movie is just brings everybody together no matter what. You know, you all have fun going to see it. If you really don't enjoy this movie, honestly, I think there's something wrong with you. It's a very high energy film. I love it and I do highly recommend it. Uh, you can f- currently find it on Hulu, and it's a great Halloween viewing. Now, there was a remake done in 2015 called Rocky Horror Picture Show Let's Do the Time Warp Again, which is supposed to be a live stage show, but it was not done live. Fox screwed up by not doing it live. You know, that, I mean, they made, they made obviously, tape the show, but they didn't broadcast it live like when they did Grease Live, but... As we saw, Fox does not have a great track record with doing these live shows. Um, they try to they they lean too much on the weirdness and not enough of the campiness that was in the original. So while the the actress playing uh, Dr. Frankenfurter, uh, Laverne Cox, got high praise for their uh, portrayal, which from what I saw in little bits and pieces, was damn good. You know, the rest of it just wasn't that great from what reviews were saying, so I avoided it. Um, I might give it a shot if I can probably find it on, say, Hulu or something, but, you know. Well, 
That's it for another unforgettable luncheon. I hope a good time was had by all. You can find me on Twitch, Twitter, now known as X, Instagram, YouTube, and now TikTok at SteamedHams81. And you can also find me as the Unforgettable Luncheon on Facebook. Don't forget to check out my merchandise store, Steamed Hams Merchatorium. Links to all of these will be in the description of this podcast. I'm your host, Steamed Hams. Join me next time when the topic will be something nerdy.